Number one asks us to write an equation that represents the total cost of C large pizzas and D um, large one topping pizzas. So if we look up here, we've got large cheese pizzas cost $5 each and large one topping pizzas cost $6. So total means that we're going to add the cost of each of these. So the cost um, for the cheese pizzas plus the cost for the one topping pizzas. So this is going to be um, the cost for cheese. We're paying $5 per cheese pizza we buy. And in this case, we're buying C cheese pizzas. So we're going to do five times whatever C represents. And then similarly for the one topping pizzas, this time they cost $6 per pizza and we are buying D one topping pizzas. So then this would be our total um, cost equation. Number two, Jada plans to serve milk and healthy cookies for a book club meeting. She's preparing 12 ounces of milk and four cookies per person. Including herself, there are 15 people in the club. So she's planning 12 ounces of milk per person and four cookies per person. A package of cookies contains 24 cookies and costs $4.50. Then for milk, each gallon jug is 128 ounces and costs $3. Then we've got these different letters here representing different situations. So the N is the number of people in the club. Okay, so N is the number of people. M is the ounces of milk. C is the number of cookies. And B is the budget. So in this first one, it says M, which is the ounces of milk. So the ounces of milk equals 12 times 15. Would that make sense? And it does say that we get 12 ounces of milk per person. So 12 per 15 people would be 12 times 15. So this one would be good. That would make sense. Part B says that we have three times the ounces of milk plus 450 times the number of cookies, and that should equal our budget. And really we want $3 um, per gallon of milk, not per ounce of milk. They're telling us how many gallons, or sorry, how many ounces are in the gallon, and the number of cookies is 24 in the package, but the package costs 450. So part B isn't going to be good because we don't have ounces and um, packages here. Part C, the um, four times N, which is the number of people. So four times the number of people equals the number of cookies. So four times the number of people would equal the total number of cookies. And this makes sense because we have four cookies. Let me get rid of some of this because we have four cookies per person. So four cookies per person. So four times the number of people. That would make sense in this situation. Then the next one says we're going to do four times 450 equals the number of cookies. Because remember, C is the number of cookies. And so that's not going to make sense because that's saying four basically four packages of cookies because this is doing four times the dollars. And so we don't want that one. Part E is telling us that our budget is going to be two times three and three times 450. So let's take a look at what this three represents is the jugs of milk. Okay, so this is um, three gallons of milk. So we're going to want to make see how much we have to do here or sorry, two gallons of milk. My my bad. So the three represent is how much each gallon costs. So do we need two gallons of milk? And so let's look here. Okay, so we need um, how many ounces of milk per person? So 12 ounces of milk per person is 12 times 15. So we need 180 ounces of milk. 
and each gallon has 128. So we are gonna need two gallons of milk. So we're gonna have to spend two times three on milk. And then for cookies, the cookies cost 450 for each package. Okay, so this is saying we're getting three packages of cookies. So let's see if that's correct. Remember that each person is getting um, four cookies. So four times 15 is 60. So one package is 24, two packages would be 48, and then three packages would give us 72 cookies. So we are going to need three packages. So two gallons of milk at $3 and three packages of cookies at $4.50 would be our total budget or the amount that we're going to need to spend in this situation. Number three, a student on the track team runs 45 minutes each day as part of her training. She begins her workout by running at a constant rate of eight miles per hour for a minute then slows down to a constant rate of 7.5 miles per hour for B minutes. Select the equation that describes this relationship. So you wanna be careful here because we've got um, a mismatch in units. So here we've got per hour and here we've got minutes. So you're, and same here. So 7.5 per hour and then we're running for B minutes. So, um, we want to figure out, so A minutes plus B minutes equals 45 minutes would be true for an equation for number of minutes, but we want distance. So this is just her total number of minutes, so that's not what we want. Then here we would have 8 miles an hour times A minutes. If the units matched, this would be good. But this is eight per hour, not per minute, which is the units that A is in. So C, we have run A minutes out of 60. So this accounts or this um, converts the hours to minutes or our minutes to hours. So this would be good because we're going to be going for, let's say it was 10 minutes out of 60. This is one sixth of an hour. So you want to make sure that you convert your units to account for that A is in minutes. So C would be the good one there. Number four, Elena bikes 20 minutes each day for exercise. Write an equation to describe the relationship between her distance in miles D and her biking speed in miles per hour when she bikes. So again, we got miles per hour. So then remember one hour equals 60 minutes and we're gonna have to deal with this in here. So if she's going for a constant speed of 13 um, miles per hour for the entire 20 minutes, her distance would equal 13 miles per hour and she's going 20 minutes out of the hour right? So 20 out of 60. And you could simplify the um, 20 out of 60 to be one third of an hour too, if you wanted to. So either of these are fine. At a constant speed of 15 miles per hour for the first five minutes. So the speed that she's going is 15 miles per hour, right? And this is for the first five minutes. So she's got five minutes out of the hour. Then she's going to go at 12 miles per hour for the last 15 minutes. So for 15 out of 60 minutes of that hour. And you can leave it like this. You can simplify these two. So if you want to simplify um, 5 over 60 to 1 12th of an hour, you certainly can. And um, 15 out of 60 to 1 4th of an hour. But you don't have to. And then the last one, a constant speed of M miles per hour for the first five minutes. So M is her speed, and then she's going for five minutes out of the hour, plus then N miles an hour for 15 minutes out of an hour. And again, you could simplify those to 1 12th and 1 4th if you wanted to, but you don't need to. Number five, the dot plot displays the number of marshmallows added to hot cocoa after um, by several kids. 
what is the mean average deviation of the data in the plot? So for mean average deviation, we need to know the um, mean of the data. So you can either add them all up or you see it's symmetric. So we know that this is going to be the mean as well. And then mean deviation is how far are each of these data points away from the mean. So the distance of three from the mean is two. So it's two away from five. Four is one away from five. These are all zero away from five because they are five. Six is one away from five and seven is two away from five. Then you add all of these together. So then we'll do two plus one plus one, two, three, four, five, six zeros, which I'm not going to write in, um, but we would have six zeros in there plus one plus two. So add those up and we get six and then divide it by the number of data points there were, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 data points. So you take the average of the deviations. So this is all of how far they were away from the mean, totaled six divided by 10 values, and that gives us 0.6 marshmallows as our mean average deviation. Number six, here's a data set. After studying the data, the researcher realized the value 100 was meant to be recorded as a 15. What happens to the mean and standard deviation of the data set when the 100 is changed to a 15? So we can look at, um, you can plug these into Desmos or into a calculator to figure out each of these values for especially the standard deviation. Um, but so for, remember for mean, you just add up all of the numbers and divide by how many there are. So this original total is at 150 and we have six points. So our original mean is 150 divided by six, which is 25. And then that is going to decrease to um, 65. So the new total, if this was a 15, our new total would be 65. So then we would do 65 divided by 6, and it would drop to 10.83 as our new mean. So the mean is going to go from 25 to 10.3. And then our standard deviation in the first set, so if you type this into Desmos, um, or into a calculator, you'll get your original standard deviation was 33.7. And then when we get in the correct value, it's going to drop to 3.44. And we know that it should be way less because now there's way less um, change or variability when we go from 5 to 15 versus 5 to 100. Then for the original set with 100, would the median or mean be a better choice for the measure of the center and explain your reasoning? So for the original set that still has the 100 in it, the median is going to be a better choice. And that's going to be because it is less um, skewed by the incorrect data point. Number seven, a coach for a little league baseball team is ordering trophies for the team. Players on the team are allowed to choose between two types of trophies. The gold baseball trophies cost $5.99 and the uniform baseball trophies cost $6.49. The team orders G gold trophies and U uniform trophies. Write an expression that could represent the total cost of the trophies. So we've got $5.99 for each gold. So we do $5.99 times the number of gold trophies we end up buying. And then we would be doing $6.49 per uniform trophy which is being represented by U. So however many gold we buy, multiply by 599. However many uniform we buy, multiply by 649. Add them together for the total. 
Number eight, the robotics team needs to purchase $350 of new equipment for each of the X students on the team um, plans to fundraise and contribute equally. So each of the students plans to fundraise and contribute equally to the purchase. So what would an expression be for that? So we need to raise $350 total. And if all of the students are gonna raise the same amount, then we just need to divide that 350 by the number of students that there are, and that would determine how much each person needs to contribute. Number nine, in a trivia contest, players form teams and work together to earn as many points as possible for their team. Each team can have between three to five players. Each player can score up to 10 points in a round. Elena and four of her friends, okay, so a total of five people, Elena and four of her friends decide to form a team and play a round. Write an expression, an equation, or an inequality for each quantity described. If you use a variable, be sure to specify what it represents. So the number of points that Elena's team earns in a round. So we don't know how much they're going to earn. So we can't write a, an actual equation, but we do know that her team can have up to five players, and each of those players can score um, up to 10 points each. So we know they can't go, they likely can't go negative because they can't lose points. So we know that it's going to, that zero is going to be the low end. And I'm going to call it um, point P for points. And that the point total has to be lower than 50, 10 times the max players of five. So their score is going to be somewhere between zero and 50. And then we'll say that P is the points scored per round. The number of points Elena's team earns in one round if every player scores between six and eight points. So now Elena's team again has five players because it says Elena and four of her friends. So if we take six times five being the if everybody got the lowest amount that would be 30 points. And if everybody scored the most, so between six and eight, so eight times five would be 40. So this time the score is gonna be between 30 and 50, or sorry, 30 and 40. So if we read this, P is greater than 30, P is less than or equal to 40. And I don't need to define a new variable because I just use points, P for points scored again. The number of points Elena's team earns if each player misses one point. So remember the total points they can score are 10. So if each one misses one point, that means each person is scoring nine points. So it's gonna be nine points for each of the five players. So nine times five. The number of players in a game if there are five teams with four players each. So we have five teams times four players on each team. So five times four. The numbers of players in a game if there are at least three teams. So now we don't know how many teams there are, but we know there's at least three. So um, this one, the lowest, remember this one also doesn't tell us how many people. So remember there was between three and five players. So each team has to have at least three players. So we know that the minimum amount of players is going to be um, nine. So we know that the number of players is going to be greater than or equal to nine. And I'm saying N is the number of players. And we don't know a top end to this. We only know that there's more than equal to or more than nine players because we don't know how many teams there are. There could be 15 teams, 20 teams, we're not sure. 